Okay, welcome back to Senate Education. Uh, <clears throat> Jim, uh, I, uh, wondering if you would please bring us back to the topic uh, when we were talking with Professor Teachout and yourself around uh, some of the issues we're dealing with around uh, church and state. I know you have put together a, a, some, some options for us to consider uh, around what we might do to um, protect uh, that line, if you will. Uh, and so I'm wondering if you could just give us your, give us an overview of, of your thinking and, and why this direction you think might make the most sense and, and then a little walkthrough of the bill. And we're not gonna be making any big decisions today, but it will uh, just help focus us, I think. Sure, yeah. Thank you. So for the record, I uh, tuned in with this console. Um, I think this area, because it involves a constitutional principle, um, which has been interpreted many times by the courts, is frankly quite confusing to understand. Uh, so before I, we go through options and language, let me just help define, if I could, the problem you're trying to solve here. Um, and the problem you're trying to solve here is that the Vermont Constitution has this clause called the Compelled Support Clause, which essentially says that uh, citizens of Vermont cannot be compelled to support a, any, any religion. So, um, so the way that's been interpreted by the Vermont Supreme Court in a case back in the 1990s called Chittenden Town, uh, the court said, yes, you can provide tuition, public tuition, to religious schools, but you have to be sure, you have to take some safeguards to ensure that those funds are not being used for religious, religious instruction. Okay? So, um, so you have that guidance from, from the Vermont Supreme Court over 20 years ago. And the problem that we have is that districts have been uh, denying uh, use of public tuition for religious schools like Rice uh, High School. They've been denying it because they are religious schools. So they haven't been applying a safeguard against a use. They've been saying as a blanket statement, we can't fund you because you're a religious school. So the Supreme Court has held, you cannot discriminate against a religious school solely based on its status. So the recent cases that have been coming up in Vermont, we've seen, uh, there have been some holdings um, that basically have held that, that Vermont is discriminating against these schools based on their staffs, because that's what the record has shown in the court record. It shows denial, denial by districts on that basis. And what hasn't happened in the 20 or so years since Chittenden Town was decided, there's been no state directive going to school districts as to how they can establish safeguards against improper use. The districts have been on their own to figure that out or just to deny funding uh, based upon staffs, which is unconstitutional. So um, that's the problem. The problem we have is, is we're, in, we're in a situation now we've got court cases that are in live uh, flow here, uh, which are coming against the state um, uh, because we really haven't defined what those safeguards look like. Um, so what the AOE did in February of this year is they issued for the first time non-binding guidance to school districts as to what those safeguards might look like. The AOE uh, says as in as uh, guidance uh, that uh, hey, here, um, that it has no authority to uh, to bind. Um, school districts, because it's really a district issue, not an AOE, AOE issue. Um, so it's given some guidance. Uh, and then Professor Tichot came in and testified as to a, 
as to a process for certification. You heard, heard from him, which is part of the guidance that the AOE gave as well. But I think what um, an option for you is to give uh, give direction, from direction, the school district saying that you shall provide funding uh, to these religious the schools uh, if they provide the district for the certification, the funding is not being used for the purposes of religious instruction, worship, or propagation. So what I have here for you today is a bill that gives that direction to school districts. Uh, and with that direction, the state is now saying to school districts on a uniform basis, here's how you do it. Um, and therefore it will allow school districts, districts to fund um, the schools if they get the certification uh, and they're not using those funds for improper purposes. Let me pause there before I go on. Is there any questions? Any questions about that framing? Any questions? <clears throat> uh, so, are we putting here, Jim, in 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 effect, creating a certification program? Yeah. Senator Chairman, yeah. do you have a question? I saw you just pop back. Okay. okay. So let me share my screen for, okay. for a minute. Uh, I'll come back to. We talked as well about the idea of. Uh, conditioning funding on um, application of anti-discrimination laws, right, uh, to these schools. I haven't put that in the bill, and I'll explain why, uh, but let me go through the bill first, and then okay. we can talk about that element of it as well. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen if I can. Uh, yeah, screen's too good. And show that. I'm going to bring that over. This. Okay. Can people see this? Uh, not yet. Uh, there's no? a, this, huh. the old windows. Is that the old windows? I don't even. It, it looks, like, try again. It looks like it wasn't opened up. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you need to open the document on your desktop screen. I did that. Yeah. yeah let, me, let me find it again. You take your time while you're doing that. I just, I don't know if anybody has seen the uh, perhaps the worst or the funniest technology mistake that I've seen in a while I, I, with the the attorney who had the cat filter on. Has anyone seen that? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> there is nothing that tops tops that one. I will send it along. I will send it along. I, I sent it to Dick Sears. Oh, you did? My yeah. daughter sent it to me like at six o'clock in the morning. And then I said, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, I saw in the I saw in the news. I think it was no less than a week ago and I don't know if it was a senator house committee in New Hampshire but there there was a legislator whose cat continued to get in the screen and that caused um, some frustration for committee members to the point that uh, they're trying to do something to ensure your pets are not seen uh, in the New Hampshire legislature. Really because yeah. you know, my cats um, one of my cats will sometimes jump behind me and senator Pearson in uh, finance I, I you know his cat when I was on finance would always pop in and other cats yeah that's funny it, it, where people i wonder why they want to stop seeing pets in the screen maybe just i didn't i didn't dive into it. my kids walk in front of the screen four times six times a day so i mean what could... right 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 how can, yeah how can last you be upset year, but last year in this committee we saw a lot of pictures of senator ingles cats she just would show to us around the committee room oh we... uh Senator Ingram's uh, Ingram, yeah, not Ingram. Ingram. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim. Yeah, I'm having trouble here. I'm not sure why. I'm sorry. Um, no, you take your time. If, if it's if can... better for you, we can always uh, follow along. Uh, Is it on the committee? It's, uh, I believe he, it's been posted. Yeah, if you don't mind, that would be. No, that's fine. 
Yeah. This time that's probably the better, better way of doing it. Um, okay. yeah, uh, does everybody have it? Uh, would anybody, can everybody find it? I have a. No. Which one is it on there? Let's see. Senator Campion, if you give me a couple of minutes, if you want me to post it, I can. I don't see it there. Uh, if you have not posted it, yeah, that would be great. Uh, I, I have posted it, but oh, do you want me? Do you want me to try to share it? Uh, where is it on the uh, committee page, Jeannie? It's under Jim's name. Second, second. It should posted. be under Jim's name. Okay. I think it's the second one. This, the first one was uh, the bill you know. that we just finished, and then, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Oh, great and uh, great. Everybody happy? Okay, great. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, good. So I will go through this um, draft. It is um, a draft um, that could be Canadian bill. Right now, it's under uh, Senator Campion's name, um, and it prohibit it proposes to prohibit school districts from paying tuition to certain schools or programs, regardless of religious status or affiliation, unless it receives certification from that school or program that none of the tuition for which payment is requested has been or will be used to support re religious instruction or worship or the propagation of religious views. So there's findings and purposes. Let me get, take you through those because it emphasizes again what I said at the beginning. So first you have the Vermont Constitution has the Common Support Clause, which provides that no person can be compelled to support any place of worship contrary to the dictates of conscience. Uh, and then in Chittenden Town, decided back in 1999, the Vermont Supreme Court held that a school district violates the uh, Compelled Support Clause when it pays public tuition to a religious school in the absence of adequate safeguards against the use of such funds for religious worship or instruction or the propagation of religious views. And it says the purpose of this act is to def define adequate safeguards that a school district must employ to ensure that public tuition is not used for religious worship or instruction or the propagation of religious views. So section two uh, amends a section of statute uh, dealing with the payment of tuition to schools. So A is not amended, but what A says is that a school district shall not pay uh, the tuition of a student except to a public school and approved independent school. And independent school meaning edu education quality standards, a tutorial program approved by the state board, an approved education program or an independent school in another state or country approved under, under the laws of that state or country. Um, so you can pay tuition to that list, okay? Uh, and what B says is that a school district shall not pay tuition under subsection A of this section to any of the schools or programs identified in that subsection, regardless of this religious status or affiliation unless it receives certification from that school or program that none of the tuition for which payment is requested has or will be used to support religious instruction or worship or the propagation of religious views provided that public schools that receive tuition from a school district are exempt. So we're not requiring public schools to certify this because they are public schools. For any independent school, uh, tutorial program, et cetera, listed in A, this certification would be required. And then it goes on to say, instruction and in religion that focuses on the history and teachings of various religions shall not be deemed to support religious, religious instruction or worship or the propagation of religious views, provided that the instruction is not designed to and does not, support religious instruction or worship or the propagation of any one religion or theology or group of related religions or theologies 
that is designed not to prohibit uh, schools from offering survey courses in religion. Right. Um, that language might, might need to be tweaked a bit, but that's the idea behind that language. I mean, that could I even, go over to Jim. That could even be, you know, somebody, a school offers, a, you know, a Thetford Academy offers a course in the New Testament. They can still do that. I mean, uh, or or does it have to be survey or? Well, I'm not sure. So that's what we need testimony. I think on that. You need testimony on that because I wrote it to be kind of survey like, more or less. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how to write write that if it's if it's a course in a specific religion. It gets to the point where it seems like there is this instruction. So I'm not sure how, how you how you how you draw that line. Okay. Um, so I wanted just to mention uh, Professor Tishot's testimony. He he recommend recommend this same certification in his testimony. Um, and he also mentioned that um, the certification approach is simple and practical. And he said the great advantage advantage of certification mechanism. Um, is that it avoids the need to get into any great detail about which expenditures might be eligible for tuition reimbursement and which might not be, not be. And then he goes on to say that the mechanism of certification is a familiar mechanism used by both the federal, federal and state governments uh, with court approval. So this method we're talking about is been uh, approved by the Supreme Court and by various courts. So it's a try and true method of providing a safeguard. So um, I'll pause there before we talk about discrimination. Let me pause there in case you've got questions on the adult language itself. With the approach. Any questions? Uh, Senator Terenzini. Thank you, Senator Kimmy. So uh, um, Senator Hooker understands we you know, I'm thinking of locally, we have a, a Catholic elementary school and we have a Catholic high school. Um, and, you know, if you decide to send your children there, you pay the tuition. It's not funded uh, by, you know, tax dollars. So we already have that in place. I guess maybe I missed a, a part, but what, what are we, are we just trying to strengthen that foundation or what are we trying to accomplish with this bill? Um, Senator Campion, because sure. uh, I already thought it sort of is already in place that we're not paying for, you know, for kids to go to these Catholic or private religion schools. So this would this probably wouldn't impact, I don't think, your uh, schools at all, unless you're not in a choice district. So correct me if I'm wrong, Jim. This is this is we're saying if somebody these are schools that if a um, if you're in a choice district, you now be able to, right now you're able to take your choice dollars to a religious uh, institution. And we are getting sort of mixed things happening out there. Some people are saying yes, some districts are saying no. Uh, this would give some clarifying language to make sure that uh, schools know under what circumstances they, districts know under what circumstances they could be sending and to what schools. Does that make sense, Jim? Well, let me, let me reframe that answer a little bit if I could. Um, so, so, uh, so to, to, to schools in Rutland, there are tuition districts nearby, right? Um, and they, they could send their kids to private, private schools in Rutland. Um, uh, also, if you're a public operating school, you can send, if, if the district allows it, uh, you can send your child to a different school outside the district, pay for with tuition dollars, public tuition dollars. Um, so for example, a school that operates, uh, operates schools, a district that operates schools, maybe it doesn't have a program that a child wants, but maybe it's over there um, in an independent school. So both for operating schools in more narrow circumstances and for tuition districts, um, um, they, they can uh, send children, students to independent schools. Under current law, um, they, um, as you mentioned um, in Butland, 
religious schools are parents are paying their own out of their own pockets for those programs. Right. Because school districts have been saying we can't provide funds to religious schools. But that's not what the Vermont Supreme Court said. The Vermont Supreme Court said that you can provide tuition to religious schools if there is a safeguard that those schools aren't using that funding for religious instruction. So imagine mm. that, that, that the school in Rutland, um, the Catholic school in Rutland, has a, has a system that says, okay, we're gonna take public tuition, but we're gonna use it to pay our physics teacher or our gym teacher or whatever. We're not gonna use that to, to pay for religious instruction. We're gonna use that in these other areas that are not for that purpose. That is permitted, permitted under the Vermont Constitution and under the Shipman case. Uh, but what's happening today is districts are saying no, uh, because you're, you're in the school, you, you can't do that, and that is unconstitutional. So this is a way to thread that and basically give guidance to school districts to not say no, but to say yes, if you have safeguards in place, and the way to do that is through a certification. So with this change, um, Rutland, um, or let's say Chittenden, Chittenden is a tuition town. Uh, Chittenden could pay tuition to your Catholic school in Rutland if the Catholic school in Rutland gives a certification to Chittenden School District that funds are not being used for religious instruction, worship, or propagation. So we, okay, we, so change, we change what's happening on the ground now. Okay, so that, that, that helps a lot. So I let me just pitch a scenario. I, I live in Rutland town, so we don't have a high school. So I had school choice. I could have went to Rutland or Proctor or West Rutland or wherever. I could have essentially, I could have gone to Mount St. Joseph's in Rutland if I wanted to. Um, and right now per Vermont constitution, Vermont law would have authorized the tuition to be paid to MSJ on my behalf. If they could certify that it's not being used for religious use, yes. Hmm, interesting. Okay. That's been issued since 1999. But as I say, there's been no guidance issued since that date. So school districts have been on their own. I think this is a, I, you know, maybe maybe Senator Hooker knows more, but I think this is a sort of a hidden secret to most people. I mean, I've never heard of this before. You just live around here with Catholic schools. You know, if, if you're going to the Catholic school, you know your parents are paying for it or you're going to the public school. So this is this is interesting to me. But wasn't that one of the cases that was brought up in Chittenden? I mean, I know that there were there was um, discussion about whether or not the kids from Barstow could go to MSJ. Um, yeah, so the, the case that came up with Chittenden back in 1999, um, which was exactly Chittenden involved, actually, going to, I think, Mark St. Joseph. So yes. that was the case, actually. And um, there have been a number of cases since. And, and a year ago or so, the Supreme Court in the Espinoza case said that you cannot discriminate against religious schools based upon their status. And that's what's been happening in Vermont. So um, the, the kind of urgency around this, if you will, is that we are not well placed right now to get on the right side of the line. And it, giving some guidance to districts as to how to, how to do this in a way that is constitutional um, is the purpose of this bill to serve. Does that help pull Senator Karenzini? Yeah, okay. Uh, Jim, is every, given that the Espinoza case, that was a federal case. Yes, are, good court. Are, are basically all the states right now in the union dealing with this same kind of thing? I mean, well, maybe not grappling with it or, or trying to do what we're doing, but you know, if you're in, in Wyoming, has this opened up, that Espinoza case has opened up a similar uh, opportunity situation where they too can say if their version of Rutland Town in Wyoming can now send their kids to their version of uh, the Catholic school in Rutland. Yeah, so what's happened, interesting, uh, I think the Epsilon is a case that was Montana, Montana law, actually. And I, I think I mentioned in my slideshow a while ago, 
many states adopted the so-called mini brain brain amendments in the 1800s, which were amendments to the constitution called no aid provisions. Those provisions said uh, the state shall provide no aid to uh, religious organizations, okay? And, um, and the Supreme Court found that's discrimination based upon status. That's what they said. So it struck down essentially the Montana Constitution um, provision. And likewise, states that have that provision, that provision was adopted uh, as an anti-Catholic uh, thing back in the 1800s. Um, and so many states have that provision. We don't. We've got our compelled use provision, which is around how you use funding. So we, we're in a much better place in terms of constitutional law in Vermont. We are consistent with the U.S. Supreme Court. But in practice, we're not. Because in practice, school districts have been denying uh, public funding to these schools based on their, on their stats. So while we're okay constitutionally right now, we're not okay on the ground. Uh, and that's what this is designed to cure. Okay. Uh, Senator, uh, me, Senator Hooker. Oh, thank you. Jim, um, with regard to the certification, I know that, you know, we're, we're, as long as they can certify that they're not going to use it for um, religious based, religion based studies or payment to staff and all of that. Um, what else would that include? I mean, how do they have to itemize, you know, each of the things that they're not going to use it for? And what do we do? We have any um, sense or parameters around um, what are those those functions, those religious functions. I mean, talking about the possibility of offering, say, a, a survey of a comparative religion, that would be okay. But hiring someone to teach theology would not. Is yeah, that yeah. correct? Yeah, it, 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 it does leave, um, the, the language in the draft bill now leaves it quite open and vague, for sure. Um, and that was a recommendation of Professor Teachout because he was worried about going down the other avenue, trying to define all these parameters in terms of segregation of funds and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So his idea was keep it simple, make it a certification, which has been accepted by the courts. Um, but it does open the question as to, you know, is there some audit, audit that's done after the fact to find out? How they use the funds? Is there some control? I mean, you're basically relying on the honesty of the school to certify. So you might decide to, you know, pad that out a bit and have some art, art work done or have some parameters. But this recommendation was to keep it simple and just do this. But mm -hmm. it's up to you, of course, what you do. But that then begs the question of, you know, blended funds and, and separate accounts from tuition yeah. coming from public schools. Yeah. Okay. It is very much, it sounds like the honest, you know, the, the honor policy here, you know, please do this. And we hope that, you know, you'll, you'll abide by what we're saying. I, I still worry a little, you know, I, well, we'll get into the anti-discrimination stuff. Uh, Senator Perslick and then Senator Lyons. That was gonna be my question about the anti-discrimination stuff, if we were gonna get into that or not. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be next after we finish up with other questions. Senator Lyons? That, that's also my question, but a yeah, uh, uh, comment that, uh, gee, I really hope we can trust religious schools. Yeah. I mean, I, seriously. Yeah, yeah, no, I... <laughs> the, so, uh, the moral uh, fiber. <laughs> right. So before we, we do go to anti-discrimination, is there a way to... So let's talk about the teaching of science, for example. Uh, do, would we, should we say that science has to be followed by the Vermont standards? Uh, if, you know, um, 
creationism versus uh, the teaching of, you know, evolution? I mean, are there things there that are concerning to, to you, Jim? Well, I, I guess where I'm thinking about this from, um, I'm trying to not go into policy and into your jobs. <laughs> so I'm trying to try a line here, if you will. What I see is the course of facing bad records. They only decide what is, uh, what, what is in the record. Right now, the records are showing decisions by school districts that are based upon not providing funds based on status. So the goal here might be short-term goal, do something quickly to get the record in a better place. So of course, have a record that you've taken action and given guidance, it's mandatory, um, and at least they have a record so they know that we're not discriminating on that basis. Whether you go further and add um, anti-discrimination language or you know, various other conditions, um, if you do that, my fear, frankly, is that you're gonna bog this bill down so much that it might not make it through and we're gonna have the same record we have today the courts are looking at. So you can always take on the discrimination point at a future time in terms of what schools have to comply with. Um, but so I was, I was separating that conversation in my mind a little bit because I was just concerned that that, that addition could really affect the likelihood of this fix being put in place in a short term way to create a better, better record for the courts uh, for Vermont. Um, are, you, are you particularly concerned with, I mean, us getting something through the Senate, the House, and the governor's signature if it has the anti-discrimination? Because I, I feel like that I, I wouldn't personally, I feel pretty confident that uh, we would be okay there. Well, I, I guess my concern is more around constitutional issues. So I think once you start add, adding those things in, you raise a host of other issues that have to be dealt with. So, for example, we talked before about applying labor laws to religious schools and the exception they have for, um, for people who are considered to be kind of uh, ministerial function. So, in, in the US Constitution, as interpreted by the Supreme Court, there is an exception where those schools can discriminate against an individual who's an employee. Um, and they could discriminate on the basis of age, uh, of, of, of sexual preference. So uh, that's, that's protected by the constitution. So if you try to add that as a condition here, you're gonna up against the constitutional issue there. And I don't know, as you talked about before, we've got the anti-discrimination laws in Vermont based on public accommodation. Uh, and I'm not clear in my mind whether those laws apply to private schools or don't, because it's not clear to me that they're open to the general public um, because they're private schools. So I think if you, if, you, if you add that provision, maybe it's okay, but I think you have to hear from the, uh, the right advocates around those laws to figure out how they apply or don't apply or what the issues are. So I, I think it gets a lot more complicated once you go down that path it raises other issues. Um, I'm not saying that's not a good idea from a policy standpoint. I'm just saying it raises no, no. Part issues. That, that's helpful. I, I wonder, uh, and then Senator Hooker, if uh, you know, we've heard from Professor Teach Out, which was was helpful. Uh, I'm not questioning his skills or talents, but I uh, wonder if we should also hear from another uh, constitutional uh, expert, and that's just something that maybe we can we can talk about in terms of possibly finding one or, or just getting another opinion. Senator Hooker. I don't know if this has to do with anti-discrimination or what, but is, would this be open to every religious school? Or would, is, are there some kind of parameters around, well, I guess it would be discrimination if we didn't open it to everyone, but you know, you have some people who open a school um, with certain religious uh, intent 
and uh, you know, it may just be in somebody's house and kids are going to that school and you know, how, I mean, they would have to be recognized, correct? Uh, under- uh, more, more than recognized. So schools who, which, which are eligible for public tuition, whether you're sectarian or secular or wherever, have to be approved by the AOE. So they have to be approved by the AOE. A a bunch of standards for approval based upon academics and teaching. And so you have to be approved first. And some of the religious schools are approved, like Rice Memorial is approved, even though it doesn't take public tuition because it wants the staff to be approved. Uh, But in order to take public tuition, you have to be approved. So it can't be anybody it has to be improved in independent school. Okay. And that of course has to comply with all kinds of regulations to be approved. Because sure. we do have another religious school in Roland that is, you know, has been running for quite some time. I'm not sure what their status is. Senator Perslick. Anything? Your no, I'm, I'm still interested in the, the state's interest in, in ensuring that these schools that are getting public funds aren't discriminating. And maybe that's through that a public accommodation, you know, portal, if you want to call it that. So I'm, I guess I'm just saying I'm interested in that conversation to hear more, more about that. And is there anything the state can do about that? Yeah, no, I, I, I too am interested. Senator Lyons? Yeah, uh, uh, but I do think that once you ask, uh, consider anti-discrimination for the institution, then there is, uh, let me just ask this question. There is no requirement that the institution accept or allow for any certification to receive the public dollars. So they wouldn't have to do that. I mean, they wouldn't have to, right? I'm asking uh, Jim that question. So under this bill, any any school, any independent school, any approved independent school, whether secular or or, or um, sectarian, would have to certify that they're not using the funds for. R- right, but they don't have to accept any funds. So there's no, no they don't, reason for that. So, but that, so then, if there is an anti-discrimination policy embedded in our bill, then uh, independent schools say, "Well, look, you know, what we we want to continue doing what we're doing. Period. End of conversation." Then the question is, who suffers from that? Then the kids don't have the opportunities. Uh, I'm, you know, but but it also. <laughs> Then it also says that they're discriminating <laughs> against kids. I, you know, so it's that circular argument. It's just pretty horrific. Um, well, it sounds like it would be if you, if the school said, if we said you needed to follow the state's anti-discrimination policy, and the religious school said no, we won't accept out. LGBTQ teachers, we, you know, will have students, you know, you know, we kind of have that policy, then they would just have to find another school to go to, basically, if, if that's, you know, their choice district might, you know, if, if we, let's just take, you know, you, you go to Proctor or Burn Burton Academy instead of, of the, of the religious school. So the question is, do we want to look at anti-discrimination? Do you think, Jim, it makes sense and committee members, uh, but uh, Jim, you might know more on this. Does it make sense for us to talk? Who else does it make sense for us to have this conversation with while we're making the decision? For example, does it make sense for us to have the attorney general? And does it make us make sense for us, you know, to hear from other individuals in particular? Well, I think the Human Rights Commission, uh-huh. they're the ones who administer the, the um, accommodations law. So definitely from them. Um, 
labor, uh, the expert in the office on labor issues is Damien um, Leonard. So if you want to hear more about that exception that we talked about um, in labor law, he'd be helpful. Um, AG, I'm not sure. AG's been involved in yeah. some of these cases. So you might want to get the perspective. I'm not sure. Chris Curtis from that office might be somebody who might be, be helpful there. Senator Lyons, were you going to? Oh, just, no, I was thinking uh, Bryn Hare has been really helpful to me in looking at constitutional issues. And I'm Great. wondering if she, ha if, what your thoughts are with another ledge council on constitutional issues. I mean, as compared with Peter Teachout, which is kind of difficult. That's a question for you, Jim. I, I'm not sure that Brennan covers this area, area specifically. Um, okay. The lawyer that covers the um, accommodation laws is uh, David Hall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt Center Alliance? Were you going to have to say something else? Okay. So I will, if it uh, looks like Perhaps the, the, the committee is interested in hearing then more information on whether or not we should include anti-discrimination language if we were, you know, going forward. So we will go ahead and we will set, I will work, reach with, uh, reach out and work with Jeannie who, uh, and uh, continue some testimony. In terms of this, the urgency of this, Jim, um, this is something that uh, you think, in your professional opinion, we need to do something with this session, this year. Well, I'm, hmm, I can't, I can't say it that way because okay. it's not my role to tell you, tell you, tell you that. I am just seeing that that the record before these these courts, yeah, they're looking at these cases. It's not very good um, because the record is now based upon status. Yeah. And districts haven't had the guidance they need. So if you want to have a better record going forward, um, put the course to consider this is a step to take, this is a option to take in, in that in that in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like also I will talk with uh, Senator Sears a little bit also this weekend to see if maybe as we're working on this, they might want to have their eyes on it um, either early or if they'd rather wait until we vote something out and then kick it down their way for them to have a look before it makes its way to the floor, which I would feel, feel good about. Jim, anything else from you? This is very helpful. Um, you know, we had jumped into this a little bit, a uh, challenging topic. Um, and uh, I will work with Jeannie to, to bring some uh, additional perspectives in next week. Yeah. Senators, anything else on this? Or anything else uh, for the week before we uh, say goodbye to one another for a few days? Um, Senator Perslick. We could use the term science-based religious instruction. <laughs> we could. Oh. <laughs> Do I hear evolution? <laughs> <laughs> Just tie it in with the literacy. Science-based, everything will be science-based. <laughs> Yeah. Evidence-based religion. Evidence-based would really be <laughs> the coolest, right? <laughs> Wait a minute. You know, they're all based on faith. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. All right. Uh, nothing else on this. Nothing else on any other topics. Uh, please, I'm going to jump in soon after this uh, and uh, try to finish up what I'm going to talk to Senator Kitchell about, and we'll send it all off to you for your okays or your edits. Uh, and feel free as usual, please edit freely. And if you wanna call um, and talk about it, that's, that's great too. So, okay. Thanks everybody. Really oh, thank it. you. Thank you, Jim, thank you. Thank you. Send your 
send your vaccine questions in, please. Will do. Happy yes. Valentine's Day, everybody. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Take care. Day.